Hey guys, Ernie here, and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. It's that time again. We're going to do another stove video. I know, I know. I've used the Trangia Spirit Burner for years and years, and I've been keeping my eye on the ever new titanium uh, alcohol stove. It looks a lot like the Trangia, it doesn't have the screw on top. It's just a much lighter titanium version with a very similar design. So I found that on the internet. I don't remember exactly how much it was. I want to say it was about $35. But then I saw another one that looked exactly the same. And it was only $18. And I'm like, well, is there really a difference between these two basically identical looking stoves? I think what any self-respecting outdoor enthusiast YouTuber would do, I ordered them both and we're gonna put them to the test. Stay tuned and we'll see whether or not the real deal is worth the money. Thanks for watching. Frequently, companies will create a product that works very, very well, and other companies will come back and they'll make basically copycat versions of that particular product, and they're much cheaper. It's easy to get tempted and go for the cheaper model, especially when they're like this and they look exactly the same. The Trangia Spear Burner is a classic burner. This Evernew burner is from Japan. It's been around for a very long time as well, and Evernew has been around as a company in Japan for, for many, many years. Now, the titanium stove for Evernew is not super cheap, like I said, and it is much more attractive to spend basically half the money on this one. Let's take a good look at both of them. We're going to weigh them, look at the pros and cons, boil some water, and see which one performs the best. So first of all, let's take a look at the real deal. This is from Evernew. You can see it's stamped right on the back there. It's also on the inside. You can see it says Evernew Titanium. Very, very nice. This is made in Japan. It is pure titanium construction. The size is basically 2.8 inches by 1.65 inches. The weight on the website says it should be 34 grams. So let's see if that shows, if that's right. All right, we're getting 36 grams or one and a quarter ounces. So 36 grams, one and a quarter ounces. I'll zoom in for you guys so you can see on the inside it has markings for one and two fluid ounces. Okay, it also has markings for 30 and 60 milliliters, which is basically the same. The maximum capacity that they're saying is 70 milliliters, so it's just over two ounces. It has two levels of jets. You can see jets on the bottom here, okay, and then jets along the top, which is where the traditional Trangia ones are. One thing that's important to realize with this stove is that it has an inner fiberglass wicking material, so it's not just a hollow body. It has a fiberglass wicking inside, which I think is gonna make a difference. Cost, like I said, is $35. It also has two optional stands. One we'll be using today, which is this titanium cross stand. The other is the DX stand with the turbo plate. I also purchased that. We're gonna be putting it through uh, some testing here soon as well. As you can see, these things look very, very similar. This is the copycat model, basically. It's branded as Boundless Voyage. The company that makes it is ZXMY, and it is made in China, okay? They're also saying it is basically pure titanium construction. The size is the same, 2.8 inches by 1.65 inches. The weight they're stating is two ounces, so let's verify that here. So we got 44 grams, or one and a half ounces, so it's actually coming up a little bit less. The one and a half ounces, not bad. True to its copycat form, it also has markings, as you can see on the inside, for one and two ounces and 30 and 60 milliliters, and also says that 70 milliliters is the maximum. It has two layers of jets. I will say that the jets here on the outside in particular are uh, larger diameter jets. The pattern of jets looks exactly the same between the two stoves up on the top and on the bottom. It just does seem that these bottom ones are a little bit larger diameter, like I said, than the others. It does not have a fiberglass wick, so this is a hollow bodied stove. There's nothing in there to help with the flame or whatever it might be. And of course, the major difference is this is $19 on Amazon. Looking at the two again next to each other, the Evernews Titanium is a little bit different finish. This is more of a matte finish. This is more of a glossed finish. They're also on the Evernew is kind of a noticeable lip right here. You can feel where it's been bent over. The Titanium has been bent over. This model, you do not feel that it is more seamless. I would assume that means this is more of a stamped press construction, which is gonna be much cheaper to produce than something like this that needs to be created in two separate pieces and then put together with the wicking and then this needs to be rounded over on the top. So I think that's just a production deal to make it a little cheaper. We are gonna use the Evernew Titanium Cross Stand for both of these uh, tests. First of all, we're gonna fill it with one ounce of heat, which is uh, in the yellow bottle. We're gonna light it. We're gonna time how long it takes for them to prime. It is fairly chilly in my room here, so they'll probably take a little while to prime. It'll be curious to see if that fiberglass wicking helps the priming 
of this ever new sum. I have a feeling that it definitely will. So we'll time how long it takes to prime, we'll time how long it takes to get two cups of water to a boil, and we'll time how long it burns for on one ounce of fuel. All right, that's about it. Let's boil some water. All right, so we're gonna start with the Chinese version. I've dimmed the lights here so I can see when it actually blooms. So we're gonna start it up. Start the timer, okay? We're gonna wait and see how long it takes for it to actually bloom. All right, one minute, 45 seconds, we're gonna call it. We're gonna restart it and put on our water. So one minute, 45 seconds to get it to bloom. Let's see how long it takes to get it to a boil. All right, guys, we're running out of gas here. We are at 100, 200 degrees, nine minutes, 22 seconds, it just went out. So we got up to a maximum of 200 degrees and boom, I mean, it just went out basically at nine minutes, I think I marked nine minutes, 22 seconds where it went out. So we didn't get to a boil with one ounce of fuel. Let me recycle the water, get water back on, and let's see how the name brand Evernew performs. All right, we're back with two cups of water, 65 degrees. We are going to light this up and see how long it takes to bloom. All right, we're lit. Let's see how long it takes to get this thing bloomed up. All right, wow, so we're already starting to see some bloom and it's much earlier. We're almost there, guys. All right, we're gonna call it at 30 seconds. 30 seconds for a bloom. I'm gonna put this on, start it, and let's see how long it takes to get to a boil. All right, so we're up to 200, which is where the, uh, the maximum of the other stove got. Let's see if we can get it all the way to a boil. All right, we're getting close here. All right, boil at eight minutes, 24 seconds. So eight minutes, 24 seconds. Let's see how much longer this thing uh, runs for. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the water on so that we control the environment the best we can and uh, let's see how much longer it runs for. All right, we're starting to lose some steam here. All right, it's pretty much out now, nine minutes, 30 seconds. We'll call it out at nine minutes, 30 seconds. All right, so what did we learn? Well, I'm gonna tell you, we're gonna talk a little bit about flame and flame color today, and that's really gonna help us understand why we got the results that we got. So the first obvious thing we noticed was the bloom time. It took 30 seconds for the Evernew to bloom, and it took a whopping one minute, 45 seconds for the Chinese version to bloom. That's a big, big difference. One minute, 15 seconds waiting for something to bloom is a long time. Now, as a consequence of that, I think it took a long time for it to bloom, so it used a lot of fuel. Now, what's interesting is they both burned about the same amount of time. The Chinese version burned for nine minutes, 22 seconds, where the Evernew burned for nine minutes, 30 seconds. Big difference, of course, is that the Chinese model did not get two cups of water to a boil. It only got it to a maximum of 200 degrees, whereas in eight minutes and 24 seconds, the Evernew got two cups of water to a boil. So why is it that both stoves burn for the same amount of time, but obviously the Evernew burned longer and hotter, and it was able to bring two cups of water to a boil? Let's talk about why. It all comes down to flame color. As things heat up and combustion becomes more complete, you get a change in the spectrum of the light that comes off of the flame. You go from red to orange to yellow to blue, with blue being much hotter than say, for example, red. The genuine Evernew with its fiberglass wick probably allows better combustion of the fuel and a hotter burn. Now we're in an air conditioned room, so you expect that once that flame gets up out into the atmosphere here, even just a little bit above that stove, you're gonna to start to get some yellow flame. It's gonna cool off significantly. But you can look at the flame that's coming straight out of the jets to tell you the story. The Chinese version, as you can see, has blue coming out of the jets, but then at the very tip of the flames, it is already starting to go orange. That means it's cooling off very quickly. Evernew, on the other hand, has full blue blooms all the way out of the ports, and it doesn't get cooler until it gets out above the level of the stove when it gets into the cooler air here in my air conditioned shop. Now red flames are somewhere between 1000 and 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. Orange flames go up between 2000 and 2200. White or yellow flames are more like 2400, 2600 degrees Fahrenheit. And once you get up to blue, you're up at about 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. So that little bit of change in color of the flame is giving you a five, six, 700 degree difference in the heat of the flame. Now what are alcohol stoves supposed to do? They're supposed to take fuel and convert them into heat. Well, it is clear both with the numbers and with the flame they produce that the Evernew is more efficient at creating a hotter flame, therefore it's able to heat things faster and get things to a boil. 
It burns basically the exact amount of time. One ounce of fuel burn basically the same within eight seconds of each other. Both of them burn for right about nine and a half minutes. The big difference is, is that the Everney was able to get it hot enough to get to a boil inside of that nine and a half minutes. So you have two stoves that look basically the same. One of them costs about double, the other one obviously is cheaper. You look at the construction of it, it's much cheaper. You can see where they're trying to cut corners. The simple fact that one of them has the fiberglass wicking inside, which I think is one of the things that makes a huge difference in the performance. Obviously another way to cut costs and lead to a less efficient product. So you might be tempted to purchase the cheaper version and think it'll work just the same. Well, let me tell you, it'll make flames. If you add enough fuel, it'll bring water to a boil, but it is less efficient. As always, you pay for what you get. The Evernew makes hotter flames. It weighs less, has better construction, and performs better. Now, is it a big practical deal? Well, I think it is personally. You're waiting a minute, minute and a half longer for something to prime. You're gonna end up using more fuel. I think it's a big deal, but that's me personally. There's nothing wrong with going with the cheaper stove. If you only own the cheaper stove, you'll only know it works. You'll never have any comparison to it. My idea of this video was to look at the two products and decide, is one of them, which is more expensive, worth the money? I think we've shown that it clearly is. Like I mentioned, I also purchased the DX stand and turbo plate for this particular stove. I'm gonna be checking that out, checking bolt times, just using the cross stand like we use today, plus using the DX stand with and without the turbo stove, and we're gonna see what kind of difference that makes. I've been doing a lot of stove videos lately, guys. It is hot in Louisiana, and I like being indoors when it's this hot and muggy outside. I really appreciate the continued growth and support. If you guys like this video, please do me a favor, hit that thumbs up down below, help spread things across YouTube. If you like the video as well and you wanna see more like this and you wanna make sure you see that DX video when I put it out, hit the subscription button. If you're feeling really crazy and you wanna make sure you never miss a video from me, hit the ding dong bell and you'll be the first to know. Always guys, I really appreciate you checking out the channel, really enjoying putting out videos for y'all, doing fun stuff, just things that I enjoy and I hope you enjoy it as well. Get to enjoy the rest of my Saturday today with my family. I hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are. And stay tuned for more videos here on Paleo Hiker MD.